Today we're driving the 2022 Grand Wagoneer Obsidian. This is a special package for the Grand Wagoneer. It comes in just under $101,000. It's powered by the 6.4 liter Hemi V8. It has a four wheel drive system, an electronic locking rear differential, air suspension with up to 10 inches of ground clearance, and screens everywhere. If you don't quite know the differences between the Grand Cherokee L, the Wagoneer, and the Grand Wagoneer, the Grand Wagoneer is the top dog, the most expensive and luxurious option. It takes aim at the Cadillac Escalade and the Lincoln Navigator and sets to dethrone those as the top American full-size luxury SUVs. And upon first impressions, it's doing a pretty darn good job at it. We have a whole lot to talk about with this Grand Wagoneer, so let's get started on the interior. We have a really nice, luxurious space. You can see some switch gear from other models, mostly just the turn signals, but everything else in here is really well done. I would kind of compare the interior quality and the materials, the fit, the finish, the touch points to something like maybe just shy of a Land Rover or something along those lines. I have a really nice leather steering wheel, this very cool finish throughout the center console area. We do have some gloss black plastics and some haptic touch buttons down here. Um, we do get some redundant physical controls though for climate, which is really nice. And check this out. We have a climate screen here, which exclusively gives you controls for your seat adjustments, your massage, your rear climate, and you can hide this screen and behind it is your wireless charging for wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. You've got a passenger HDMI port, and yes, the passenger also has their own personal screen, which you actually can't see from the driver's seat. Right now, for example, it's on, and you can only see it if you're in the passenger seat. So it's an angle display, which is pretty cool. And then we get a few USB ports in there, along with a 12 volt DC charging port. We're just gonna close that for now because it just kind of looks cool with all this array of displays. We have some nice little details in this Grand Wagoneer. The volume knobs, they're just very nicely finished, hewn out of aluminum. Look at the surround on the stop start button. It's got its own little stitched leather cluster. We have some pretty nice ergonomics in this Grand Wagoneer, pretty familiar cruise control systems, touch points and everything on the steering wheel. Uh, lots of different displays in this fully digital center display. Sometimes certain screens take a little bit longer to load in this Grand Wagoneer. I have noticed a little bit of lagginess with the touch display on startup, especially you know when everything is cold at the beginning of the day. Once you get going though, everything seems to kind of wake up and do pretty well with responsiveness. Um, I have this screen in night mode right now, so it's the darker display. I think it kind of looks a little bit better on camera and you know falls in line with the rest of the blacked out nature of this obsidian package. Overall, this is a really nice interior space. The screens, they almost dominate the experience, but they, they don't because you still have a lot of physical controls and I appreciate that. There's not a ton of settings hidden within here. You have the ability to kind of have some favorites and quick access controls. We have a phenomenal Macintosh sound system, a reference audio system in this Grand Wagoneer. Um, there's lots of interior cameras where you can go in and select individual seats so you can basically see what your kids are up to, which is very useful. And just a ton of space. Look at all the room in all three of these rows in this Grand Wagoneer. We have one panoramic sunroof and then another sunroof just for the third row. More displays in the rear. We have an Amazon Fire entertainment system, which is pretty cool. You can watch Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Amazon Prime, all sorts of different things and also plug into an HDMI port. Um, anyway, let's hop outside and walk you around this Grand Wagoner, show you what it looks like in this Obsidian package. Really beautifully integrated folding running boards too. Look at this thing, it is just a slab of SUV. Look how nicely those running boards integrate into the sidestep too, very cool. Massive 22 inch wheels. 
that say Wagoneer right in the center cap. And one thing you'll notice, there are no Jeep logos really anywhere on this Wagoneer except for right here underneath the mirror and right here in this tail lamp. It's an interesting looking SUV. I'm not sure it's pretty, but in this Obsidian package, I think it looks pretty badass. It's a nice spec. You can also get this in a gray and a white. We have a bunch of different buttons on our key fob. We can lower the vehicle to its access height, which basically just slams the air suspension all the way down to the bump stops. And we'll show you what the air suspension looks like in full ride height off-road mode. It has 10 inches of ground clearance at its highest setting. And it's pretty amazing the range of height adjustability with this air suspension and how it maintains its camber and wheel alignment throughout that whole range. The air tank is right at the front of the vehicle, so you don't really hear the air suspension system running, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's pop the trunk and look inside that, see what type of space we have behind the third row. So a usable amount of room back here underneath this really plush carpet. We have our roof rails and down here we've got our jack. We do get a spare tire in this Grand Wagoneer right under there. And you can pop, pop this panel off here and get access to the trailer hitch and wiring and everything. In this spec, I believe this Grand Wagoneer can tow up to 9850 pounds, just shy of 10,000 pounds, which is pretty amazing. Thanks to that 6.4 liter Hemi V8, makes 471 horsepower. Let's show you, eh, let's fold down one side of this third row here. Tons of space in the back behind the second row. I mean, this is just a people and thing mover. It has so much space back here. Look at the, even there's even leather padded armrests with USB ports. You can adjust the front seat angles, the back seat angles. We'll fold these both back up so we can see what the third row looks like. All the mechanical operation of these seats works pretty quickly too. You can close the tailgate right here. You can also open the tailgate by just putting your foot underneath this rear area here. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You usually have to kind of do a swipe. We also get a couple other neat little details in the back of this. Every reverse camera, or this is the reverse camera, this is the rear, um, rear view mirror camera. They each have their own little sprayers to clean the lenses, which is pretty cool. And then you get this textured finish around the license plate. Not sure how well you can see it with uh, you know, the camera view and some of the dirt, but look at this. This even has the Quadra Drive 2 system, which is the four wheel drive system. It has a low speed transfer case and an electronic rear locking differential. Let's show you in the back seats here. We have a privacy screen, really nice detailing and finishing all throughout the door panel. Pretty much everything is covered in leather, except for maybe this kind of bottom area in plastic, but still much nicer quality interior throughout this Grand Wagoneer than let's say the Escalade, for example. Um, lots of adjustability on these seats fold the backrests way back get very comfy fold everything forward and have pretty easy access into the third row I'm five foot ten and I'm stepping back here with ease and this is some of the most room I have in a third row that I've experienced in any of these large luxury SUVs it is almost second row levels of space back here we have a nice cup holder leather touches all throughout our own little private air vent we get rear climate controls right here on that screen there are remotes for each individual entertainment screen we have a little camera here so the parents up front can spy on the kids pretty neat stuff and if you need to leave the third row just press that button and everything tilts forward Lots of adjustability from these seats. That's what they look like all the way back. You can get even more room in the third row by tilting these all the way forward. I mean, 
pretty intuitive and easy to use seating system and arrangement. Fire TV. You can pair your remotes and get a bunch of different stuff. I haven't messed around too much with this yet. I don't have the Wi-Fi connected yet in this vehicle, so it looks like we're not gonna be able to connect to the Fire TV, but it seems like it would work just like any other Fire TV system. You've got access to Netflix and Disney Plus and all those great uh, viewing apps, and you can just sit back here and have your own personal entertainment system. You also have controls for climate control. We have heated and cooled seats in the second row. Easy to use, nice and responsive screen. You can quickly change your settings, turn it off. You've got more cup holders, kind of a copy of the front center console in the back here. Lots of space, look at that, it's enormous. More USB ports, more DC and AC outlets, a plug outlet, and then look at the neat little Macintosh sound system logo. Pretty well designed, love all the touches. Lots of nice little details, and overall just feels like a very quality interior for your hundred grand. I even like the way the door handles feel when you open them. They have kind of a resistance when they come back, and uh, there's a softness to it that just feels luxurious and well-made. We get a couple of tow recovery hooks up front here. Now this Grand Wagoneer is not trail rated, but it still has a ton of off-road capability due to that ground clearance and the four-wheel drive system. Let's pop the hood, give you a peek at the 6.4 liter V8. There it is. <laughs> you can see the air suspension tank right there underneath the radiator fan. A lot of room, a lot of space in here. Will we see a supercharged Grand Wagoneer someday? Who knows? The engine's right over that front axle for great weight distribution. I don't even know the fuel economy numbers on this. It can't be very good. I'll put everything in the description. All right, guys, well, there's a little walk around on the Grand Wagoneer. Let's hop inside. I want to put this air suspension all the way to its highest setting. We're going to go. It's got five different height settings. And it's already starting to raise up. You can see those fender gaps getting larger and larger. It's doing it all pretty quickly. The front will raise up a little bit, then the rear will lift up. Makes these 22 inch wheels look pretty small actually. But it gives us 10 inches of ground clearance. Pretty nice approach, breakover, and departure angles too. <laughs> that is one really nice advantage to this Grand Wagoneer is that the Escalade and the Navigator really don't have any off-road capability just due to their ground clearance and uh, their four-wheel drive systems. They could do okay, but this is still a Jeep. I remember when I was out at the Dunes on a random Wednesday and FCA was out there testing their Grand Wagoneers and Ram TRXs, and these things were just climbing up and getting over everything. Their off-road capability was really impressive to see firsthand, and those were pre-production models. See, so we've got independent front and rear suspension here combined with the air, air ride. It rides really, really well. All right, let's hop inside. We'll go over a couple more things and then we'll take this thing for a drive. Like I said, there's a lot to talk about here. So we have a few different drive modes. We get rock crawl, sand, mud, snow, auto, and sport. And those also correspond to different suspension settings and uh, differential settings with the four wheel drive system. We also get four wheel drive low. So that's all very nice. We have this cool little rotary shifter. Feels nice, it's again, metal. A couple more cup holders right here. Place to put your phone in there. And then another massive area. Actually though, this is a refrigerator. It's a little cooler. 
and uh, this is apparently the only place where the user manual fits in the front. This uh, glove box is actually pretty tiny, which is weird. Oh, and you know what? We have to show you the passenger screen, so let's cut to the passenger seat. Okay, so here we are. We have controls for our audio, video, and HDMI. You can plug in an HDMI port into this, play video games, watch a movie, uh, whatever you want. You have fire TV, rear infotainment controls here. You can kind of... Uh, search for navigation destinations, plug something in so that the driver doesn't have to do inputs. You can also see our rear view cameras from this passenger seat, so you can spy on the kids, see what they're up to. Fam cam, and then there's also a rear view camera. Pretty cool stuff. <laughs> Great integration of tech, and it seems to work pretty well and pretty seamlessly this week. More Grand Wagoneer badges. Just really nice finishing and touches. Look at the the way this Macintosh tweeter looks and in the side. Lots of adjustments for the seats. I mean, these seat controls are pretty much just infinite. There are so many different settings for lumbar, back bolsters, thigh bolsters. We won't delve into it because it's boring on camera, but you guys get the idea. And we get one more screen and camera in the rearview mirror showing us what's behind us. With the third row up, that's actually a pretty good view out of the back. Here's what the reverse cameras and 360 cameras look like. Lots of different views there. You can make everything full screen, change directions, see super wide views, all very useful. High res, fills the screen beautifully. You've got your heated steering wheel controls and heated seat controls right here. You can select your zones for cooled seats, for heated seats. I've had some trouble getting these buttons to work this week, uh, so that's one complaint. It seems like they don't always quite respond to your inputs. You need to kind of warm them up a little bit. So, uh, But the level of heat in the seats and the steering wheel is just about perfect. It's not too hot. I'm not burning my hands off this week. All right, let's take this thing for a drive. Feather light steering, returns to center beautifully. You can see our air suspension is returning to a normal height here. And after everything that we've talked about and seen so far in this Grand Wagoneer, just sitting in a parking lot it really does deliver on the driving experience too. This feels like such a quality and premium vehicle from Jeep. I mean, they've really got to be proud with this. this. They've done such a good job with the interior, the fit, the finish, the feel of this vehicle. And it really does deliver from a driving experience as well. Just take a listen to the 6.4 liter Hemi V8. We don't have paddle shifters, but we do have some audio controls behind the steering wheel, those typical buttons we've seen on uh, FCA vehicles, Stellantis vehicles for a long time. We do have a gear limiter right here, but we do need to uh, you know, kind of press that button up and down to use it. Not quite a manual mode, but useful for towing or when going down a hill. Ride quality, NVH over bumps is all fantastic. This air suspension does a really nice job soaking everything up and isolating you from rough pavements and uh, the rough roads that we have here in Michigan. I like how large of a screen CarPlay has. So much real estate to be able to see apps and different views. Waze never seems to work for me anymore. I have pretty good visibility throughout this Grand Wagoneer. Really the only place that's a little bit tough is this A-pillar is super thick and you kind of have to be looking around that and the mirror periodically. It 
It's eight-speed automatic. It's very smooth, very seamless. I even like the noise the turn signals make. Steering is light. This wheel gets a little bit thick at nine and three, but at the top and at the bottom, it's very comfortable and nice to hold on to. The heating element pretty much heats the entire rim too. And at speed, it is very quiet. We can even close our sun shades for even less wind noise on the highway. Pretty quick too, this 6.4 liter Hemi really puts its power down, despite the size, the weight, the full-time four-wheel drive system. You get on the highway and the air suspension achieves an aerodynamic ride height, so it just gets a little bit better. Fuel efficiency, it cuts through the air marginally better than it would otherwise. Let's put us into sport mode see how it handles. Eight speed will hold gears a little bit better in sport mode. Suspension feels a tad tighter. I like the brake pedal feel too. It's very stiff. There maybe isn't as much bite as I would like, but you do adjust to the feel. It doesn't feel like you're driving pushing down a brake pedal with a big, heavy, Larry SUV. It feels a little bit more positive and responsive than that, which is nice. Overall, I really like all the inputs. I don't know, guys. I think compared to the Escalade and the Navigator, especially the Escalade, this is another level for American luxury. This is a really impressive vehicle. I love the way it drives, it has great features, and yeah, it's expensive, but for what you're getting at 100 grand, this feels like a $100,000 vehicle, whereas I'm not sure the Escalade that we had last year did. It had a lot of screens, a lot of gimmicks, um, but this just seems to execute them a little bit better and feel like a higher quality product. We're still in sport mode. put us back into normal. <laughs> this is a luxury vehicle after all, even though it has a great engine, pretty nicely tuned suspension. People are going to be wafting around in these things, not hammering on them. I do like these tiny little fisheye mirrors in the corner of the lens. It uh, shows you a really nice view of what's directly next to you and kind of helps complement the blind spot monitoring system. Our cruise control buttons are very easy to operate and use, very intuitive. So we've got adaptive cruise control. We can set our speeds, change five mile an hour increments with ease. Not a lot of information is shown to us in the head-up display, but we might be able to go into the menus and change some of that. We can enable steering assist. And that seems to do a pretty good job keeping us centered in the lane. You just need to kind of have your hand gripped around the steering wheel for that to work. The system will pause when you put your turn signal on. 
Let's get five mile an hour increments and all of your cruise control systems and, and driving assistance settings are all visualized right here on the bottom right hand of the screen. Active driving assist canceled because it got a little bit confused back there. That's okay. But overall this week, I found this to be a pretty nice vehicle to drive on the highway. Really, I mean, you know, you're gonna get terrible fuel economy in something like this just because it's so big and so thirsty. But as a highway cruiser, it is insanely comfortable. The active driving system seemed to work great as long as you just have a grip on the wheel. It doesn't prompt me to put my hand on the wheel if it's already on the wheel. The, the sensors inside this rim seem to do a pretty nice job of sensing that something is there gripping it. Another really neat feature of this Grand Wagoneer is it has a night vision camera. You can see the heat signatures of everything around you and if there's a pedestrian or an animal or basically a living thing in the field of view it'll highlight it and put a little yellow box around it. You can see the hotness of you know, insides of vehicles or there are exhausts underneath the, the vehicle. It's kind of neat to see all that visualized and the fact that you can do all this during the day is pretty fun also. So let's see if we follow this traverse behind us we can see how hot the exhaust is right there. You can see if there's people here over here to the left getting into their cars. For nighttime driving on a dark road and you want to be able to see animals or deer, this would prove to be pretty useful. Yeah, for example, look at these ladies here visualized in the screen. This guy walking in front. <laughs> pretty cool tech. Nothing new or revolutionary, but it is neat to use and to be able to see, especially at night. During the day, it doesn't, I don't think it's highlighting people like it did last night. Um, and I don't know, we might sneak a night drive in on this Grand Wagoneer. It's probably worth it to show you how all the screens and illumination and ambient lighting look at night. So until then, you guys will kind of get the idea of what this does. It's pretty, pretty neat. So how can we sum up this Grand Wagoneer? I think Jeep has done an outstanding job putting this thing together. I love the way it feels. I love the way it drives. There's tons of great features in here. The implementation of the technology is pretty good. A few bugs, a few moments of lagginess with these touch displays this week. Um, sometimes these climate settings are a little bit slow to respond for the heated seats and heated steering wheel controls. I like though that there's some physical button redundancy throughout this vehicle. That's really nice. Um, we get a usable shifter that isn't weird. Uh, it's just a lot of normal familiar switch gear and buttons throughout this Grand Wagoneer and I really do appreciate that. I think Jeep's done a really good job with this and in my mind they've come out swinging and kind of bested both the Escalade and the Navigator overall with this new Grand Wagoneer. So props to them on that. I think with everything that this offers from its interior space and volume and towing capacity and performance and comfort, and luxury and off-road capability, it all comes together as a really pretty compelling package. So anyway, guys, those are my thoughts on the Grand Wagoneer. We're going to do one more quick walk around of this and then we're gonna go in and do a quick sound system test of this macintosh reference sound system which is just phenomenal a really impressive sound system um, but you guys will be able to kind of hear that through um, our sound system test tracks all right we'll put it in a park i'm actually going to turn this off because i want to show you what the lights do We'll also be posting some videos on this on the Windy Road Magazine YouTube channel. So stay tuned for that. Look at this, little details here where this is wrapped in leather and it says Grand Wagoneer and then Wagoneer right here. 
this carpet is very nice and plush. It's almost a little bit thicker than you see in a lot of other vehicles these days. Little details like that add up in your $100,000 three-row school bus. This thing is just enormous. <laughs> All right, check out these taillights. So I'm gonna lock the vehicle. And they kind of fade away. And then they do the complete opposite when you unlock the vehicle, which is pretty cool. These windows too has a, have a bit of a glaze to them that makes them look a little bit special. I'm not sure if it's a UV protective glaze or just kind of a lighter tint. I think this Obsidian package is a pretty nice way to go. It looks really sharp. If you do think the Grand Wagoneer maybe isn't the best looking SUV on the market, this kind of makes it a little bit more of a badass design. Yeah, I like it. I've really enjoyed my time in this this week. All right, let's get into this Macintosh sound system. I believe Macintosh only does a sound system in this Grand Wagoneer and the Ford GT. I do have to kind of turn this system on every time I've noticed when you get in the car, which is a bit odd. All right, so we'll go into CarPlay, find our music app, and then we can go into the Macintosh display and see our output levels, which is neat. Audio and track controls are behind the steering wheel. Macintosh sound system just has exceptional clarity, really crisp, very just beautiful and nice to listen to. It's incredibly well balanced. The Navigator's Rebel system was very impressive too, and the Escalade's premium sound system was really good too, but a bit bass heavy, and this is just, just about right. All right, guys, hopefully that gives you an idea. I mean, really, with this type of sound system test, the best way to go about it is to just go hear it in person at a dealer. But if you can't do that, hopefully this kind of gives you an idea of what it sounds like. All right, guys, thanks for watching. That's going to be it for this one. We'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.